First, I would like to thank members for their comments and suggestions. Building a knowledgeable nation is one of MCI's key goals. There are two essential building blocks. First, providing access to quality information resources. And second, equipping our people to harness the power of information. Although we live in an information-rich world, not everyone has the financial means to access information and knowledge that they could benefit from. Our libraries thus play a pivotal role in providing our people with access to knowledge and reading resources and will be evolving to meet the greater demand for information. I will now address Dr. Intan and Mr. Gantiempo's questions on how our libraries will be increasing their reach and can better serve our people. In fact, total membership reached some 2.12 million as at the end of 2012. I am pleased to announce that we are developing two new libraries. The Tampanese Library will be redeveloped as part of the upcoming Tampanese Town Hub in 2016. It will be co-located with other community arts and sports facilities. To serve the growing population in the northeast region, we will also be building a library in Pongol in 2017. These two libraries will be planned as next-generation libraries with new offerings to meet the evolving information needs. Over the years, we have seen an increase in the demand for physical books. Overall loan figures have increased 22% from 31 million items to over 38 million items in the past few years. To serve readers better and grow the reading base, NLB will increase the loan quota. From May onwards, Singaporeans and PRs with basic library membership will be able to borrow eight items instead of six, and this includes three audiovisual items instead of two. As Ms. Lau Yan Ling rightly pointed out, our libraries need to evolve to cater to those who prefer online sources of information. E-book holdings will be increased, and by the end of 2013, the public will enjoy 820,000 more e-books available for borrowing through NLB's website, bringing the total collection to over 3 million e-books. Users can also borrow electronic devices such as Kindles and iPads if they do not have their own. This year, NLB will also put in place a partner membership scheme where partner organizations can help promote reading to their members, and partner members can borrow up to 10 items, including 4 audiovisual items. People and private sectors can make a difference in contributing their expertise and giving back to society through libraries. In addition to the libraries opened by NLB, the government is partnering closely with the community and further encouraging cultural philanthropy in opening and operating new library branches in the next few years. The library at Chinatown opened at Chinatown Point recently in January. It is NLB's first community contributed and supported public library. The contributions included funding for the library's development and operations, which came from the mall owner, CP1 Private Limited, and the Kwan Im Tong Hu Cho Temple. Individuals also play an important role. Volunteers run the many key operations of the library. The library at Chinatown is thus a unique effort in which all stakeholders in a community can contribute to building up their own library. The library at Orchard, as mentioned just now by Mr. Gan Tiempo, is another exciting partnership with the community. NLB is working with Singapore Polytechnic to use design thinking as part of the library's development process and have consulted the public widely in testing its service prototypes. I'm happy to update that just a few months ago, an exhibition was held at the Central Library showcasing the service prototypes for the library at Orchard, seeking public feedback. One of the prototypes shown was a reading cocoon, which provides quiet reprieve while being surrounded by books and multimedia. Users could walk through these prototype spaces and experience these ideas firsthand. Many users thought it was exciting to be a part of the co-creation process in bringing the library at Orchard to life. I should also add here that our libraries and shopping malls uh, have opening hours that are in line with those of the shopping malls. Even as new libraries are being built with the support of private and people sector partners, we are also working to ensure that as we build a fair and inclusive society, 
disadvantaged groups are taken care of. I share Mr. Gantiampo's concern that libraries need to reach out beyond its physical network. I would like to assure members that we will continue to reach out to those groups that have less access to information resources. To serve our orphanages, welfare homes, kindergartens and childcare centres, the National Library Board will be having two more mobile libraries. This builds on the success of the current mobile library or MOLLI, which has served more than 450 organisations and has had a visitorship of more than 300,000 since its launch in 2008. The development of these new mobile libraries was, un en was enabled through funding from sponsors. Our library also works together with communities to promote curation of local content. This goes beyond its traditional role of promoting reading and processing book loans. The National Library has started the Singapore Memory Project to engage individuals through community groups in collecting, preserving and providing access to a rich archive of personal memories of Singapore. It is a massive national effort and rides on the hard work and commitment of many volunteers and they have our sincere appreciation. I would like to thank the many individuals who have signed up to become SMP Memory Corps to help the community document their memories. We asked ourselves, how can we present all the memories that we have collected in a way that people can easily relate to? To support ground-up initiatives for creating new products and showcases out of these memories, the I Remember SG Fund will be launched this year. Such products could include short films, and publications featuring Singaporeans' stories that have been collected. In August 2013, we can look forward to a large-scale exhibition that showcases the collected memories. As we provide greater access to information resources, it is equally important to ensure that our people have the skills to use these resources to gain useful knowledge and insights. The government has stepped up efforts to equip Singaporeans for a lifelong learning journey. Our libraries have championed reading for many years. They do so through the annual nationwide Read Singapore campaign and through programs like Kids Read. Kids Read helps children from less well-to-do families pick up the love for reading. Ms. Lau Yanling pointed out that in this digital age, children may be more inclined to learn with visuals than with text. We agree with Ms. Lau that a good reading habit is important as it builds the foundation for independent, sustained and enjoyable learning. To further encourage good reading habits and sustained reading interests, a new program called Read at School was launched in January this year at 152 primary and secondary schools. The program aims to nurture the reading habit through a suite of activities that caters to different age groups and learning aptitudes. There are reading discussion groups on different genres that are catered to reluctant readers. These sessions provide a broader perspective compared to book-based discussions and could engage reluctant readers better. For example, one fun activity under the fantasy theme is the creation of a job advertisement for a dragon. There are also activities that help students learn how to use the library. Last year, Secondary 1 students from Queenstown Secondary School participated in Dewey's Amazing Race, to learn how to use the library's services through an exciting race format. We recognize that teachers and parents are also role models for reading and they are actively engaged in the program as well. Ms. Lau Yan Ling and Dr. Intan highlighted the need to equip our people with the skills to harness the power of information, while Mr. Zaki Muhammad and Mr. David Ong emphasized the importance of fostering responsible and discerning use of the internet among our netizens. And I would like to thank them for raising these important issues. The internet is a game changer in the world of information, as pointed out by Ms. Lau. Its vastness and reach is unparalleled and has given us easy access to almost any information that we wish to find. The benefits of being wired and plugged in are tremendous and we want to help more of our people get plugged in, especially the elderly and those from low-income households. However, we also acknowledge society's many concerns about the dark side of the internet. Antisocial behavior that we see in the real world can take place and do similar harm in the virtual world. Bullying, grooming and gambling happen online too. 
as a community, we are also concerned about the spread of untruths and rumors, racist comments and hate speech that could undermine our social, cohesion and racial harmony. Given the pervasiveness of the internet, it is a shared challenge for many societies to deal with its downsides while optimizing its benefits. How do we protect our young, in particular, from cyber risks? How can we preserve and uphold our shared values of respect and graciousness, and importantly, our racial and religious harmony? Madam, these issues are not new to this House. Just yesterday, Mr Edwin Tong called for tough measures against cyberbullying, echoing comments made by Mr Zaki Mohammad and Mr Hari Kumar earlier in the year. Ms Lau Yenling proposed that we equip parents to better guide their children in navigating cyberspace safely. And beyond this chamber, members have also called for more responsible use of the Internet's power for communication and interaction. And Mr Bayam King has also made allusions to this issue just now. I share the members' concerns, and I would like to assure members that the government will continue to support cyber wellness efforts and equip our people with information literacy skills. We have taken a multi-partner approach so as to reach out effectively. Working hand-in-hand hand are the NLB, the Media Development Authority, the Inter-Ministry Cyber Wellness Steering Committee and the Community-Led Media Literacy Council. We have worked closely with schools and parents to equip our next generation with the skills to be responsible content consumers and creators. Last year, my ministry updated this house on NLB and MDA's plans. NLB's workshops have equipped more than 6,000 parents and teachers with these skills. And NLB and MDA have also developed interesting teaching and learning resources. This year, both agencies will continue to find creative ways to share the important message with our people. The Inter-Ministry Cyber Wellness Steering Committee, or ICSC, has provided funding support to more than 20 public, private and people sector projects. One upcoming project is the IZ Hero Adventure Exhibition at the Science Centre. It aims to inculcate healthy online habits among young children. Primary school students will take on the role of the hero in an interactive multimedia game, learning strategies to overcome risks such as cyberbullying. The exhibition will be open soon, and more than 150,000 students are expected to visit it before it ends its run in 2016. We want to encourage healthy practices with full input from the community. I'm heartened that Singaporeans have spoken up against negative online behaviour. In my interactions with youths, I have also noticed that many of them voluntarily bring up their worries about some of the less savoury sides of the internet, such as hate speech and cyberbullying. It is encouraging that the generation of digital natives wants to shape cyberspace for the better, reaffirming the importance of values such as respect, tolerance and harmony. I would like to commend parents, teachers, students and members of the community for taking an active interest in shaping our online common space. The Media Literacy Council, or MLC, plays an important role in catalyzing and driving these important discussions. Just last month, the MLC organized activities to mark Safer Internet Day, centered on the global theme, online rights and responsibilities. I dropped in on a workshop at the Bishan Library and found it very useful for parents and their young children as they were taught about the potential risks of the internet. Last year, my minister spoke about a safer and more civil internet environment when he mooted the idea of an internet code of conduct. The MLC has studied the idea of a code of conduct and consulted stakeholders. It has decided that one good way forward is to work with the community to distill and develop a set of social values. In his speech to mark Safer Internet Day, MLC Chairman Professor Tan Ching Han highlighted that our shared values such as integrity, responsibility, respect, tolerance and empathy hold well whether offline or online. I think this would serve us well as the underpinning philosophy to guide public education efforts towards instilling the kind of behaviour that we would all like to be part of and see on the internet. On our part, the government will continue to support the MLC in its efforts to engage the people and private sectors. Ultimately, all of us can play a part to make the internet a safer and more responsible space for all users. 
I would like to close by reiterating that the government is committed to ensuring that our libraries continue to inform and enrich the lives of Singaporeans and that agencies continue to work together in fostering responsible content consumers and creators. Thank you.